What's up guys, Jack here with MTS, and for the past four days I've been working on trying to build the best presence detection to use with Home Assistant, and it's been difficult. Let's talk about it. Now, if you're unfamiliar with presence detection, it is the idea of detecting, well, whether somebody is present. And traditionally, that's done with motion detection. Now, motion detection has a number of issues, specifically relating to things that aren't in motion. How many times have you used a public restroom? You sit down, you're doing your business, and the lights turn off. Or you're sitting watching TV, not moving, and your lights turn off. That's super annoying. So what I wanted to do was use some security cameras to be able to see, hey, is there a human there? If it can see a human, well then there's somebody there and keep the lights on. <laughs> if not, go ahead and turn it off. But that's been, well, a struggle. Now I went ahead and deployed a ton of these V-Zoom cameras around my apartment. And for testing, I've been messing around with specifically the couch camera. That's what I've titled it. Now the general concept that I've been trying to use was use Blue Iris to monitor the camera. When the camera detects motion, it'll send an image to DeepStack to tell if there's a person there. If there is a person, we'll then send that to Home Assistant to say, hey, there's somebody here. But there's a problem with that. If I build my automation rules based off of that alone, well then I run into the same problem. Once that trigger is ended, well my lights will turn off. So for the amount of time that I am moving, the lights will be on and then a couple seconds later they'll turn off. So we need to re-trigger it and we need to do some logic and some testing. Now I did run into a number of issues with my Home Assistant installation, specifically when trying to get Blue Iris to communicate over MQTT with Home Assistant. Now, setting up MQTT, the first thing that I had to do was come in here and add this dummy binary sensor. Now, it's not really a dummy sensor because we are, we're actually triggering it. So, platform MQTT, name couch presence, and here's the topic of MQTT that it's listening for. And we have the payload on and payload off. Now, what we can do in Blue Iris is when this camera successfully detects that there is a person in front of it, send the value, send the on payload. So that's what we're doing. Inside of Blue Iris, if I come into the, the Blue Iris box, and we can see our couch camera, camera settings, alerts, on alert. And it just sends our payload to turn on that binary state. So instead of doing any of the detections based off of motion in V2 of this project, I want to have everything triggered through Home Assistant. Home Assistant will tell Blue Iris, hey, trigger this camera to see if there's somebody there. And it would do it about every four seconds. That way the motion stuff just isn't used. And I think that would provide a much stronger and more accurate detection setup. Because instead of motion being used, well, if I have two motion triggers going, it's going to, it's gonna, it's gonna hold things up. Now I wanted to just go ahead and use the Rio Link cameras that I've already owned for some time now. However, I kept running into the same issue. Whenever Blue Iris would switch from the low res stream to the high res stream for the AI detection, for recording, all that stuff, it wouldn't switch over fast enough because the iframe time on the Rio Link cameras, I could not get it low enough or in sync enough for it to switch over reliably. That's where these V-Zoom cameras come in. These guys, I was able to turn down the iframe time to like 10. I can go down to one, but setting it to 10, I'm getting perfect handoff. As soon as the camera sees me, or as soon as Blue Iris tells the camera, hey, let's use that high res feed, that high res feed is there. Now these VZoom cameras already have some form of AI thing that they're running. So if I go to settings here, um, image or no, alarm, intelligent analysis, perimeter. If I enable that, it starts to do this AI thing. Uh, let me go, let me show you. 
they're drawing that box around me. So what I wanted to be able to do was use that AI processing to say, yes, there is a person in the frame. Now what I would like to do is have this publish an MQTT variable that just says there is a human here. And then an MQTT variable that says there is not a human here. That would be great. This thing's already doing the AI stuff. And based off of my testing, I've been looking at the playback window standing in front of it. I haven't had any false positives of what it thinks is a person. None at all. So that already works. So VZoom, if you're listening, I would love it if you guys would just enable a thing under the intelligent analysis where if there's a person detected, publish an MQTT payload. That would be great. That would solve all of my problems and I wouldn't have to use Blue Iris at all. I could just use Blue Iris for the surveillance recordings. I wouldn't have to mess around with rules or anything in Home Assistant. This thing would just be like, yes, there's a person here. No, there's not a person here. That would be amazing. You guys are already doing the AI detection stuff here. Just let me tap into that. <laughs> But since we don't have that as an option yet, seriously, VZoom, please add that. That would be fantastic. Let's see what I've devised. Okay, so at this point, I think we're on version like four. But coming into Home Assistant settings, we still have our AI scanning, although AI scanning now only runs one script. So it runs this thing in restart mode, which basically every one minute it's just going to trigger all the cameras to scan. And so that way, if uh, motion doesn't catch somebody leaving or doesn't catch somebody entering, that way this will just trigger it on a semi-annual or semi-regular basis, just so that way it can kind of be a little bit of a catch. So that's what this is doing. I've gone ahead and streamlined the automation of camera detection. So it is now back to being controlled by motion of the cameras. So we're going to do couch presence detection here and let's edit the yaml okay so this is what our yaml file looks like um basically we have an if condition now if the binary sensor that's triggered by the camera's detection of a person if that is set to on then it's going to basically turn on our boolean that is the actual is somebody in this area boolean the dummy boolean we have set up for that it's going to turn on couch true presence then it's going to send an mqt publishing to turn off the dummy boolean that the cameras use to trigger home assistant then it's going to wait a few seconds and then it's going to trigger the camera again in blue iris then it's going to wait a few seconds and then it's going to run an if statement if the binary sensor is on, we'll then do nothing, end the script, except for the ending thing is um, send the same payload to basically turn that off. So that way we can be ready to detect motion again. But if it's off, then turn off the true presence boolean, and then this else statement is back to our original if. So at the beginning, if something isn't detected, go ahead and turn that off. That's for the catch-all statement that we have running as a script. Now that script did not entirely work. Between the MQTT turn off and the blue iris scan, I had to add a one second delay. And that fixed my issue along with changing the trigger of the automation instead of it being just when that boolean, that MQTT controlled boolean gets turned on. That was what was triggering it before. When it changed from off to on, that would trigger the automation. But that wouldn't work with my catch-all, my every one minute tell Blue Iris to trigger all the cameras. That wouldn't work. So I had to change that. Instead of it being from off to on, any change in that will trigger that automation. And that automation is set to run single, so one time. So that way when the automation itself is changing that variable, it won't keep auto-triggering itself. Okay, so I have things working. Now, the issue that I have with doing all of this detection stuff one of the reasons why I have to have so many delays and why I'm using motion rather than scanning on a regular interval because that would be a lot more reliable is because of the amount of resources DeepStack takes. DeepStack takes up 
almost 100% of my i5. It's an i5-7500 in the little Dell Optiplex that's running Blue Iris. It takes up almost 100% CPU usage to scan the database file, which doesn't work nearly as well. So I've had to switch it to high-res JPEG. That takes up almost 100% of that CPU. So when I'm scanning for... 10 or 15 cameras well, I have to wait for those results to come back because the CPU version of DeepStack is just so inefficient. I've been trying to get the GPU version to work, but I can't get it working in Windows. I've tried. I have the NVIDIA developer account, the, um, what is it, CUDNN, uh, CUDA, all that stuff working or I think it's working. It's not just an installable file. It's stuff I'm actually having to set up as system or, or environment variables and things like that. I can't get that to work. DeepStack just keeps timing out whenever it's uh, using the GPU version. So I need to get that running. Once I can get that running, I'll be able to much more efficiently be scanning all of these frames. But if I can get this working, I'm definitely going to make another video about the GPU version of DeepStack, specifically a video on how to get it set up. I haven't been able to find any resources on how to get the GPU version of DeepStack set up. So if somebody knows how to do it and wants to help me out, I would love to make a video to share that with other people. But until then, this is where I have everything. It works. I can go sit on the couch. It says, hey, there's a person here, and then turn stuff on. And when I get up and walk away, it says, hey, this person's gone. That's what I want. But anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a like. If you really liked it and want to see more of me in your subscription feed, as well as keeping up with me and all this home automation stuff, well, then go ahead and get subscribed. Down in the description below, I'll have links to Blue Iris, DeepStack, all that stuff, and a few great resources, specifically the hookup. I had no idea what I was doing with Blue Iris. Watched some of his videos step-by-step, -step, followed it, bam done. I'll go ahead and drop those videos down below in the description. But while you guys are down there, go ahead and drop a comment. Let me know whether this presence detection stuff is something that you're interested in currently running, or more importantly, do you have a better way for me to do this? Because quite frankly, DeepStack is just not cutting it running on the CPU. If you know how to get the GPU version, please let me know. But anyway, guys, thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.